Providing for the elderly has become a multi-billion dollar industry with about 29,000 residential care facilities operating across the country. But a new investigation by Reveal from the Center for Investigative Reporting has found that some of these facilities are profiting by exploiting caregivers, effectively paying them as little as $2 an hour to work around the clock. Jennifer Gollin has the story. Julie Reduta knows firsthand the true costs of the long hours required for elder care. We get up like five o'clock to prepare their breakfast. Seven o'clock we start helping them bathing and hygiene. She was a live-in caregiver who expected to work around 12 hours a day, but says in reality the hours were much longer. My experience is like 24 hours, seven days a week, $800 a month. That comes out to about $2 an hour. Reduta, who now has a job with a different employer, says her former boss refused to pay her more than that monthly sum even when she worked extra hours. She explained that we have to be grateful of that 800 because she's giving free food and free accommodation, but we're sleeping in the living room with no blanket, nothing. Nationwide, there are about 29,000 residential care communities, not including nursing homes. Many of these facilities are run by small-time entrepreneurs who have converted single-family homes into assisted living facilities for seniors. They're touted as a lucrative business opportunity. And I'm going to share with you how to turn a single-family home into a cash flow machine. I found there was such demand for this business that I filled the facility in 30 days. We call it America's untapped business opportunity. These boarding care homes vary in size, but in California, most are small, with six beds or less. They're often cheaper than nursing homes, but can be quite profitable for operators. But in some cases, it's at the expense of caregivers who have little leverage when they complain about being underpaid. Asking, like, we heard that there's minimum wage, something like that, then she get mad. If you guys are not happy here, you're welcome to get out of my house. Some of our immigrant clients are unfamiliar with what the law requires, and even if they know what their rights are, scared to come forward. Winifred Cow is a civil rights lawyer who's combating what some legal scholars are calling indentured servitude. A lot of what we see in this industry is workers being paid a flat monthly salary for all the work. Some who worked for the owner of these care homes in California were paid as little as $3.50 an hour while amassing a fortune for the young owner, Stephanie Costa. I've always had this thing of taking care of older people, like uh, sick people that are dying. I've always really felt for them. In 2013, Costa described her success on the reality TV show, The Millionaire Matchmaker. My name is Stephanie and I'm 30 years old and I own a chain of elderly care facilities. My net worth is three to four million probably. I think it was frustrating and startling for us to see um, that on the one hand, she wasn't even paying her workers the minimum wage and yet to find out she's on a TV show bragging about being a millionaire. Soon after appearing on TV, California's labor regulator ordered Stephanie Costa and her company to pay about $1.6 million for unpaid wages and penalties. But that didn't disrupt Costa's lifestyle in Beverly Hills. She kept this home after filing for bankruptcy and settled with workers for a fraction of what she owed. Her six care homes are now owned by a property investment company registered by her father. Stephanie Costa is the company's CEO. When I paid a visit to her, she stonewalled. Stephanie, we've tried to reach you about the exploitation of your caregivers, but you've refused to answer our questions, and I'd like to offer you the opportunity to comment. I'm sorry, I think you have the wrong house, ma'am. Reveal found 1,400 cases nationwide where care home operators broke minimum wage or other labor laws. And in many cases, the Federal Department of Labor ordered that workers be compensated for stolen wages. Ida Genove was among those cases. Her boss stole from her twice. She took us to the Bank of America where her employer forced her to cash checks worth $5,600 for back wages and then give it all right back to him. 
I'm really mad at him. That's my check. That's my money. So it should be mine. Her employers, Ramel and Glenda Publico, pleaded not guilty to multiple felonies, including grand theft and tax fraud. Ramel Publico defended the treatment of his caregivers, telling us they were like a family, but he refused to go on camera. The Department of Labor also declined an interview, but in a written statement, a spokesperson said, the agency has conducted extensive outreach to ensure operators pay their workers the wages they have legally earned. Were you aware that over the last decade, there have been 1,400 cases of wage theft across the U.S.? I certainly wouldn't doubt that there may be that situa situation, but I think it's pretty isolated. Ron Simpson, a founding director of Six Beds, a group representing small care facilities in California, thinks most do a good job. The caregivers were really happy with their situation, in most cases. They Why were, were they happy? Th because they had a place where they could live. They, in, they loved what they were doing. They were fulfilled by enriching somebody else's life. But that is not what I found in dozens of interviews with workers who were afraid to speak up. Their bosses have threatened to fire them or report them to immigration. Some feared for their safety. Because of the millions involved on the part of the employer, I'm scared of my life. This worker is a witness in one of the largest cases involving residential care wage theft. I wanted to quit, but I needed the job. I needed to survive. While working for the operator of this care home, she says she rarely had time to stop and eat. I wasn't happy. I, w I was crying all the time. I wanted to go home. I questioned, why am I in this profession? Her former employer, Adat Shalom Board and Care, has been cited by state regulators for more than $7 million for unpaid wages and penalties involving almost 150 workers. The care home company has appealed, denied any wrongdoing, and refused further comment. Simpson says these sorts of pay disputes arise from caregivers just not keeping track of when they're off the clock. Caregivers will spend lots of time just doing their own personal stuff while they're in the home on their phones, texting, maybe even texting back home to their families. But they're not logging in and logging out when they do that. He says the solution is educating care homeowners on labor laws. To see this in action, we attended a conference his group Six Beds organized. So to me, the live-in model, do, if done right, is a win-win. Is a George Kutnarian, senior vice president at Six Beds, tells care home operators that having a single live-in caregiver is a good way to save money on payroll. You want your workers who stay overnight on the premises to be classified as live-in so that you can take advantage of that. Um, because otherwise, you're going to find yourself in the 24-hour worker boat and that's going to involve more payment. Operators must pay a live-in caregiver when on duty, but not always for sleep time and breaks. But basically what, what you need to make sure is they have an opportunity to get five hours of sleep. The five hours don't need to be continuous. Pat McGinnis from California Advocates for Nursing Home Reform says that when caregivers are worked to the point of exhaustion, it affects patients. Well, it has a terrible effect on resident care when you have to work 24 hours a day with no reprieve. She says the requirements to operate a care facility in California are far too lax. You need more training to um, be a manicurist, to do somebody's nails, than you do to run a residential care facility for the elderly. Well, it is a detriment servitude. Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro says regulators need the resources to crack down on wage theft. Issue. The Department of Labor is being hollowed out so that it cannot perform the function that it is established to be able to perform to protect workers and to make sure they are not getting ripped off by their employers. An appropriations bill she introduced would boost federal funding to enforce labor laws. It passed in the House Appropriations Committee and will now go to the House floor. You want to take a nap? Caregivers such as Julie Reduta hope the bill will force unscrupulous operators to face tougher consequences. When you abuse animals, you can end up being in a jail, and we're human beings, so I feel like worse than animals. Meanwhile, caregivers around the country will continue to push to be paid fairly and treated with dignity for the crucial services they provide.
For PBS NewsHour, I'm Jennifer Gollin in San Francisco, California. And you can find the full investigation by the Center for Investigative Reporting at revealnews.org.